Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitemout.com and P.O. Combs Asian Art, located in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, January 18th, 2019. And as we do every week, we're going to take a look back at uh, last week's eBay auction results, see what's coming up on uh, eBay this week, take a look at what's on uh, Catawiki right now, and, uh, you know, sort of finish up the week. Uh, some of you have seen it, but we did do the, uh, we had mentioned uh, a couple of times in the last week and a half, we were doing a, a video video and putting out some information on Republican period porcelains and how to identify them, how to look at them, and so forth. And to that end, uh, we did a video, and if you go over to the YouTube channel, um, you can take a look at it. And we also put up this blog uh, just yesterday. And on this page are all the images that we used in the video. On the left side, we included the uh, Republican bases. On the right, we included the uh, ones that are often misidentified as Republican, outright fakes. And at the bottom, we included authentic pieces, um, uh, just for everyone to do some comparison work. And we added some links. One of them is to Alan Trong's uh, site. It's his index of uh, images. If you're not familiar with Alain, he has, he's over in France. He has a, he's a wonderful guy. He's got a great blog. And uh, this is a link to an archive of images that he has uh, uh, of uh, all, basically all the best Qing porcelain and Ming porcelain and things that have sold uh, at Sotheby's Christie's globally in the last few years. Um, a link to it can also be found on the forum page for his for all of the different categories he's indexed. It's it's he's really done. It's an amazing job, and also a link to the research desk on bid amount, which has uh, over 400 auction catalogs and different catalogs for you to look up images of things for comparison. All right. So uh, the bl the blog has been posted identifying Chinese Republican period porcelain vases, and we get it. We talk about bowls and other things too. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, I hope you find it interesting, okay? And um, for those of you who have seen it, thanks for the comments. All right, now, uh, how did things go on eBay last week? Well, a lot, the stuff did pretty well. Uh, there was this, this uh, rather nice Noya Straits uh, uh, covered hot food pot. We had featured it on the site uh, early on, a week and a half ago, because it, it was just a nice example. We thought it would do pretty well. And uh, in the end, it did. It brought $3,550. Uh, it was a beautiful example. The uh, folks over in uh, the Netherlands at Amsterdam had it at Ceramics and Collectibles. Uh, they have a lot of stuff on eBay right now. They've got 2,300, 2,400 things, I think. All right, and we, we, we share their stuff with you often. All right, and then on to this was this very nice silk embroidery. Uh, it appears to be an 18th century example with an elephant and immortals and so forth and, you know, ascending uh, butterflies. But uh, I love the elephant on this. Uh, it, it sort of looks like the tree is coming out of his back. It's really not. But uh, they, they did these sort of sleepy-eyed elephants. They were famous for them and the way they uh, attenuated them um, sort of uh, strangely formed. But they're, they're really charming. And uh, this did very well. Well, also, this went for $3,150. This came from a, a seller over in Lyon in, in uh, France um, that uh, uh, we see once in a while come up with some things. They don't specialize in Chinese things, but I think they hit a lot of um, local estates and uh, do some pretty good picking over there. Uh, Lyon's a lovely area. I was in Lyon this summer. <laughs> anyway, we move on. Um, was this was this uh, there were two of these up actually these very nice Chinese export uh, uh, you know 1800 to 1820s uh, uh, vegetable terrines uh, this was, a, was sort of a nice one with this grisaille uh, uh, area of a western uh, western architecture and so forth uh, typical unglazed bottom and all that and uh, look at this it went for only 261 dollars okay a very reasonable price and there were two of them and this came from coast uh, coastal uh, coast antiques up in Newport, New Hampshire, near here. A fellow runs his name is Steve. Nice guy. Um, and uh, th these were a very good buy. And you get two of these for 500 and change plus shipping. The shipping, the shipping from there to here was only seven dollars. Pretty reasonable. All right. And this was another very good buy. This is a, a Chinese export porcelain, little vegetable terrine, or, or, or maybe a great, you know, some sort of like a yeah, small vegetable terrine. It's about seven inches long, uh, nicely done, had some crackle in the glaze. When you see these and they have these lines in the glaze like this, what it means is typically is that somebody at one point had, had been in the habit of putting this in an oven um, to keep it warm. 
and there it is. You can see it better. And these crackles appear um, often on on almost any type of porcelain or ceramic if they if they're kept in warm ovens too much, and the ovens get a little warm, and they cause this crackle. But it, do, it doesn't really affect the piece at all. All right. Here's the underside of it. There are the handles, and uh, this went very reasonably. 170 bucks. All right. For a nice little small vegetable terrain. All right, and then on to this, this, this late 19th century Femi Ver uh, planter, or, or, or uh, sometimes they call these fish tanks. This is more of a planter. Here's a picture of the bottom, typical late 19th century bottom. Um, and there's a ruler on it. It was about a little under 10 inches tall, uh, but a nice, nice piece of porcelain. It was interesting, you know, the battle scenes, and, and there's a horse on it. So you know it was going to get in the newsletter with a horse, um, and then this, uh, this, you know, this, this encampment, this military, uh, uh, you know, uh, people up on the wall and so forth, and uh, it did pretty well. It brought eight hundred and ninety-nine dollars, but it was a nice example. It was well decorated, and it was in good condition. In good condition, okay. And then on to this. Uh, this this was sort of interesting because we had done we had done a bit this week on you know the the bit on Republican porcelain. This is a Republican porcelain vase. All right, and it's uh, pretty much very typical of the of the type that was done, um, you know, in the 1920s or so, 1910, 1930, 1920. Uh, nice calligraphy on the back, but it had been damaged. You see, this is this huge crack running through it. Okay, but the quality was really good, and this this kind of quality is what you see in in, in nice Republican pieces, um, you know, very well colored, good decor, good artwork. And, uh, the, the, you know, these sort of, they use these apocryphal seals on them and so forth. This one had the four character enamel, uh, Chin Lung Mark, and was stamped China, all right? And uh, those of you aren't familiar with this, when you see things marked, uh, stamped in red like this at China or made in China, um, this was this started at about 1895 when, when uh, uh, countries around the world, including China, decided the country of origin has to appear on objects uh, that are being exported and sent out. And uh, it doesn't always mean that they're, they were made it after 1895, 1895 or after. Um, uh, because we've seen pieces uh, years ago. We had a we had it wasn't a Chinese thing. We had a, a very fine 18th century French table that was branded. They used a branding iron on the wood uh, that said uh, made in France. But the table was clearly older. They just marked it when it was exported. And um, uh, sometimes these little uh, china stamps, if they're done at post production, um, uh, uh, dealers have been known to remove them <laughs> uh, because the, the China, for some reason, even though it, everything after 1895 should have that on it, they don't. Um, people remove them. Um, you can they use razor blades or acetone or any number of different things to try to get that mark off of there because they sell for more, typically. All right. But here's the vase again. It was 15, over 15 inches tall, and with the crack and the problems of it, it still brought basically a thousand dollars, nine hundred and ninety-nine dollars, uh, because the work was good on it, and uh, uh, it, you know, a nice looking, nice looking example. All right, it would have brought more had it been perfect and didn't have a China mark on it. Probably would have brought four, five, six thousand anyway. All right, and then on to this. This was one of the great buys of the week. If you're a Chinese silver buyer, it was this very nice dragon-handled, uh, repousé and chased uh, silver tankard, Chinese. It was, uh, according to the seller, had no maker's mark on it, and um, which I found sort of surprising. But at any rate, it only brought $449, which I think was a very reasonable price for this. It weighed about 12 ounces, which means it had, you know, about two or 300 bucks worth of silver in it. Um, at any rate. Uh, nice looking piece, good looking piece of silver, all right, with a gold wash on the inside. All right, moseying on over to this. This is a uh, Femi Ver Kangxi style uh, mallet vase or relu vase that was uh, made, uh, you know, probably 1880s to 90s to 1900, somewhere in there, but very good quality. All right, here's a picture of the bottom of it, pretty typical bottom, all right. Um, nicely rounded, nicely trimmed, neat as a pin. The decoration, uh, facial expressions, and so forth are pretty good. Um, nothing to complain about here. And of course, if it was a period Kung Shi example, um, it would have brought a lot more. He had it listed as 18th and 19th century. I don't agree with that age. I think it's probably uh, closer to the second half of the 19th century. But nonetheless, it was a nice piece of porcelain, and it was good size. It was about 15 inches tall, I think. Uh, 46 centimeters, yeah, yeah, about 17, 18 inches. So that was a nice buy. That was a good-looking vase. And if you don't have, you know, 20 or 30 thousand dollars to spend on a Kangxi one, it's a nice, it's a nice sup, you know, it's a nice uh, something to get instead. 
And then there was onto this was the uh, the uh, uh, marble dreamstone uh, on stand, and it looks like a, a carved wooden stand. It looked like it had a little bit of lacquering coating to it. This was a nice thing, uh, second half of the 19th century. Nice looking stone on it. Um, here's a picture of the bottom of the base. All right, Not every, it had a good looking, a good look of age to it. There, as you can see, they had that reddish lacquer. Uh, they sometimes carve these. They would carve these, of course, in wood, and then they had this sort of red lacquer wash that they put over them. And you see them on the late 19th century pieces especially. And uh, this was a nice thing. And it brought $646, which I think is a completely reasonable, um, reasonable price. Not an overpayment, not an underpayment. And I like things like that aesthetically very much. And then there were these two round fan um, uh, uh, panels. They're, these are these are on uh, on uh, silk and then held inside these nicely done little uh, wooden um, uh, frames. And the frames appear. To this one, they're not exactly the same. The one of this one has a squared frame. This one had a simple round frame. And this one appears to have been maybe inlaid with a little silver wire or carved some sort of decoration. But nice quality, uh, uh, mid 19th century on both. All right. I like the one on the right particularly because it has figures and, and Chinese furniture and, you know, vases and whatnot in it. And uh, it's sort of charming. The peacocks are charming, too. But anyway, uh, the, the pair brought $1,354. This was from the seller Art Asia. He also had the previous lot of the, of the, of the, uh, of the Dreamstone on stand. He gets nice things. And this, is, this, is, um, um, this was a, a good pair of uh, pieces, good, pair, good items. All right, and then on to this. This was uh, just a sort of regular, uh, you know, Chinese rose medallion uh, uh, coffee pot. But it was in nice condition. It had, had, had that little shaped return here on the spout um, that they did sometimes. And uh, it looks like it maybe had a vent hole or a gap caused during the firing here. That's not a break. It's just a gap. All right. And uh, here's a look at the inside. It's got the grill work to hold the, the tea in the pot. Is another view of it. And uh, this did fine. It brought $406. But uh, the people tend to buy these dome-topped uh, teapots. They like them. They love those high-top domes. All right. And moseying on to this. This relief worked uh, soft blue ground uh, Famille Rose vase. It had a chip out of it. It was not in fabulous condition, but it's a fairly unusual type of vase. All right. Here's a picture of the bottom of it, and it's a late 19th century vase. When you see this type of work on it, it's a Chin Lung mark, but it's obviously not Chin Lung. It was done probably in the 1880s or so. But nice quality. It did have a ding out of the top, a couple little dings and nips, and it looked like they might have repaired it and so forth. But despite all that, it brought $826 because it's a fairly rare form. Uh, uh, thrown and then molded vases and then decorated uh, are fairly unusual. And um, they, they first really started coming around in the, uh, in the, in the, in the Yong Chen Chin Lung period, and then they continued making them. But this, this was a pretty one, and you, don't, you won't see them very often. All right, and then on to this. This was a bargain, I thought. It was a gilt ground uh, carp dish, all right, with a lot of gold on it. Nicely done. Uh, it's a late 19th century dish, but r rather unusual, all right. And the gilding on it's worn, but gilding is so... Uh, 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 easily removable, so so prone to to getting thinned out because you wash it, you rub it, you get ammonia on it. Anything, any harsh cleaner takes away the gilding. So have a little bits of gilding here missing isn't that big of a deal if you like gold washed pieces like this with the underglazed blue fish. Here's a picture of the back with the uh, endless knot and um, you see bits of iron oxide, iron in the, in the foot rim and so forth. It's got a couple of little nicks and hairlines here, and uh, it only went for $81. But as an item, this was a pretty good buy if you like gilded pieces, because, you, you, again, this is something you don't see very often. It's a, it's a type that doesn't often turn up, and this was from um, uh, was, uh, Simon Curtis, um, who's uh, uh, over in the U.K. He gets interesting things. All right, and then there was this little Femi Ver Kangxi on Biscuit um, uh, horse you know why I picked it. It's got a horse. All right. Uh, this was part of a, you know, a sweet meat set, and there would be many of these and so forth. And uh, they continued to make these right through the 19th century, of course. Uh, but this was a, sort of a nice period one. It looked like it was a little bit, I don't know if that's dirt or what it is. It might have happened during the firing. And it went for $192, but a perfectly nice, you know, authentic uh, uh, piece for, you know, for under 200 bucks. You can never go wrong with that. 
And then we had the pair of cloisonne boxes uh, last week. You might remember these. They had the uh, the stone um, uh, set uh, tops with um, uh, mandarin ducks and lotus uh, lotus blossoms and so forth, and little carved hard stone. I don't think those are jades. They're some sort of colored hard stone. But nice looking, uh, nice looking pieces of cloisonne. Good quality, and uh, they did just fine. They brought fourteen hundred and sixty dollars at the close. Um, these were coming from a seller over in, in Tyne in the UK, uh, Eagle 2010, uh, uh, somebody we've seen before. And then on to these, the, the uh, nice pair of uh, 18th century uh, Chinlung uh, uh, plates with the Buddhists on the rim. We talked about these a couple of times. I liked them uh, very much. And they did fine. They brought $530 for the pair, which is just about right. These, these 18th century dishes these days typically are selling in the you know the two to $300 range each. So to get a pair, to snag a pair like this uh, is pretty good. All right? It's, make, it's a, sort of a value-added thing. And then on to this, the Kingfisher hairpins. There were a couple of Kingfisher hairpins on last week. Um, these have become heavily collectible um, over over the years um, and especially in the last 10 years there's a there's a interesting lady that's got a thing called the hairpin museum in uh, Asia I think she has some money and she puts it all online it's interesting but these are these are becoming increasingly collectible and um, these these were fairly nice uh, as, an, as a funny aside, a couple of years ago, I got a call from a fairly famous person who I had never heard of in my life named Rihanna. I guess she's a singer. And she was the guest of honor at the Metropolitan Museum, and she was looking for one of these to wear to the museum event. It's just, and I had no idea who she was. And um, she was very nice. Uh, and um, and then, then she got upset when I didn't know who she was. And the conversation didn't turn out too well, I'm afraid. But um, anyway, she was the guest of honor, and I gave her the names of some people. She only called me because we'd handled a big collection of these about six years ago, and someone had told her to get a hold of me. So at any rate, strange things happen in this business. All right, now on to, um, let me see here, not this. This closes this weekend. This. This is that jade uh, vase that was put up by Woolworths. Unfortunately, they've had this thing up twice. Every time it goes up, it brings more money. <laughs> and it's, it's, it was, it, uh, it, it, Woolworths is a very good seller. Um, and I think it brought more money this time. I'm pretty sure. Um, it was, it, but whoever's bidding on it, there are people in China that bid on things and they don't pay for them. And I do wish eBay would kick them all off the site. But at any rate, they could do it by their PayPal account addresses. Um, this was a very nice, authentic uh, jade uh, and all that. And at this time, it brought $30,200, okay? All right, they had another jade, I guess, that did get paid for, thankfully. But, um, you know, it's unfortunate. But this is a nice piece of jade. I think it's worth the money. And um, hopefully this time around, someone will pay their bill and take care of this, all right? All right. All right, and, and that's sort of it for the week. It was sort of an interesting week. And now we're going to hop over here and take a look at some of the things that are coming up this week. We've just started to look. Um, um, uh, right now, people are looking to see what we should put on there, putting, building lists. But uh, I wanted to get a couple of things. One is this rather interesting um, 18th century Famille Rose guglet. Um, or, uh, well, it's, it's technically a guglet because there's a knot on there and so forth. A nice looking vase. And uh, that's on there. Um, that's a fellow over in the UK has it. This is something I wanted to mention in case you come across it. All right, this is a this guy's advertised this. It's Hess Fine Auctions. Um, they're nice people. I, I contacted them to let them know this is actually a Delft plate. They have it listed as a, one of those, you know, Ming Wan Li dishes, you know, late uh, Ming early Qing blue, blue and white porcelain charger plate. It's not. This is a piece of Delft, and uh, so if you see it, don't 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 jump on it. It's only at a dollar twenty-nine. It's at a dollar twenty-nine for a reason. It's also been broken. All right. And then on to this. There's a, there's some. Uh, we'll have some nice um, 18th century uh, 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 Chinese blue and white things on the site. This is uh, one of them. A nice looking brush pot, rather done, rather well done, probably transitional period. And uh, we have this. This uh, very interesting uh, Chinese export uh, uh, sort of shallow oblong bowl with a good-looking decoration, probably for the looks like for the French market. All right, that closes in four days. And then there's this. This is a fabulous set. This is Woolworths, the f folks that had the uh, jade uh, a few minutes ago that we talked about that didn't get paid for. The, this this seller gets good estates. They're down in Rhode Island, and um, they have this up. This is really quite something. Um, let me see here. The decoration on this is excellent. This is probably a, a pair of a set of Republican panels. But look at the work on this, okay? 
look at the look at the stippling and the shading and the coloration. Really, really fine work. Really fine work. The shading of the leaves. We talked a lot about shading in Republican porcelain. Um, I wish I'd seen this before we uh, did the video. I would have included it. Uh, but this is a really nice set of panels. Nice set of screens. Uh, there they all are. It's just beautiful. And nice, nice original frame. Um, and it's going to do very well. And it has some orange peel, which is typical for these big, big porcelain panels. But the coloring on this, um, if you're browsing around, come to the site and you're looking at the Republican video, come look at this in some detail. Uh, it's really quite excellent, all right? And I think it'll do very well. It's got three days to go. It's up to $6,000. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see it uh, go, to, go to the 12000 plus range, okay? You know, twelve to fifteen maybe. It's a good thing. And uh, maybe more. Who knows these days? You never know. Shipping, it's a pain, though. <laughs> uh, all right. And then over to on the Catawiki side, there's quite a bit of stuff on there. We, we changed the way we do the Catawiki listings so that um, uh, uh, we can get things up. They list more quickly. We made a few technical changes on the site to do, do with loading, so they load more quickly because there's so much stuff on the website at this point. Even though we have it on a cloud server, um, we have to keep tweaking it so the pages will load. But this is a nice uh, 18th century Kung Shi period uh, vase. Very similar in form to the uh, Famille Rose one we looked at just a minute ago. Uh, nearly identical shape, but this one's a bit earlier. All right, nice looking thing. And uh, there is this uh, barber bowl, they call these. They were made for export. Kangxi, uh, sort of Amari palette. Uh, it ends in a week, all right? And uh, this very nice uh, Kangxi period tea caddy with a silver handle on it. Um, it seems as though um, uh, Katawiki is getting better and better consignments, which is great. And then this is his late 19th, early, tw late, it's a long shoe period probably. It has a, uh, a, a chin lung mark on it, which is, which is, of course, it isn't. I think it's much later. Um, but it's molded. You can see, again, this is one of those molded relief work things with the dragon on it. All right, and then colored. But a uh, nice looking thing. It's up to $357. It closes on uh, Sunday, I guess. And this big, nice chin lung period Chinese export charger, 41 centimeters, good size plate, and is in nice condition. Nice collectible thing, great thing to hang on a wall. And then you have this, uh, they have one of these uh, Kangxi uh, carp dishes. Uh, this is a, a pretty famous pattern. Um, there's this pattern with this in the uh, Jerry Tang collection of the fish coming out of the water. I think that on, his, on that example, it's on a bowl. But quite, quite interesting. And this has the cup and the platter with the brown dressing on the rim. And uh, another Kangxi uh, porcelain uh, pear-shaped vase. This is a nice looking vase. All right, and it's got some relief work up here. Uh, very nice classic example. There's a side shot of it, okay? A uh, little roughness around the mouth. It's only up to $6. It's got seven days to go, all right? Now, you know, if you don't have a Katawiki uh, account yet, you ought to get one because I think you're going to see better and better stuff turning up there, and um, we're getting better and better at finding stuff on there. And then last is this, another Kangxi example, this very nice uh, um a plate with the, uh, the phoenix and a kirin in, in, in the middle, and then, uh, you know, uh, Buddhist uh, scrolls, Buddhist, you know, scroll rolled, and uh, these nice uh, rue heads with uh, dangling uh, uh, silk uh, tassels and these different patterns running around the room. It's an interesting plate. It's a nice plate. All right. And uh, that's about it for the week. Uh, um, if you, as I mentioned at the beginning, if you haven't seen the uh, Republican Porcelain uh, blog and video, please do over the weekend. I think you enjoy it. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to us yet here on YouTube, please do. Um, we, do a we do at least one video a week, sometimes more, and come over to bidamount.com and sign up for the weekly newsletter. And uh, be sure to check the daily uh, page on eBay today and see what, we've, what we found overnight. We update that every day, as I mentioned. And uh, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, get in touch. And uh, we're going to have a bit of an announcement about the site uh, probably within the next two weeks that I think some of you will find um, positive and interesting. All right. Thanks so much for watching. And um, I'll see you all next time. Have a great weekend. Have a great weekend. All right. Bye-bye.